Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be trying out the fourth axis rotary module from NEMA Labs. I'll show you how I set it up to get the rotary axis module parallel to the X axis and how I set my zero position on the X, Y, Z, and A axis. As soon as I took this thing out of the box, I could tell it was really well made and the fit and finish is very impressive. To set this thing up, you'll want to use the four T tracks to the left, as shown here, and place the rotary module in the center of the machine bed to try and keep the chips on the table, with the keyword there being try, because this thing can make quite a mess, and using a dust boot with a rotary axis is not practical. Just keep your shop vac handy, because you're going to need it. In the user manual, there is an illustration showing some dimensions that you're going to need to know. First off, notice that there are several sets of holes that make the tailstock adjustable with a range of 100 millimeters, or just under 4 inches. The longest piece of material you can chuck is 195 millimeters, or 7.68 inches. A couple of other dimensions to note is that the plate that the rotary axis is mounted to is 125 millimeters wide and I'll be using that dimension to set the zero for the y-axis. And also note that the height of the machine bed to the axis center line is 60 millimeters, and I'll need to know that to set the z-axis zero. Now the user manual shows a couple of different methods to get the rotary module parallel to the y-axis, with one of them using a dial indicator and the other using a round pin probe but old Dave subscribes to the KISS theory, and the parts that I'll be making are not going on the SpaceX rocket, so I'll show you a simple way to line it up. I start by sliding the slide nuts into the T-track and adding the M6 by 20 screws, but I leave them loose so I can move the rotary module to the approximate position on the machine bed. Then I take a piece of scrap wood, shown here, and flush it with the front of the machine bed on the left side and then move it to the right side and flush it again and then finally in the middle. Once I have it flush all the way across, I tighten down all the M6 by 20 screws. Now that the rotary module is in position, it's time to home the machine and set the zero for the Y axis. Let me just say, if you don't have one of these pendants for jogging the axis, what are you waiting for? The pendant makes all of this setup a breeze. I use the pendant to jog the Y axis back until it just touches the front of the rotary module plate. Then I go to the controller and zero the Y axis. Then I jog the X axis to the right to clear the plate and then jog the Y axis back until I hit the number 2.5231 inches. I'm taking the width of the plate, which is 125 millimeters, divide it by two to find the center, which is 62 and a half millimeters, and then divide that by 25.4 to convert it to inches, which is 2.4606 inches, and then I add the radius of my cutter tool, which is zero, or excuse me, 0 0.0625. When I get to that number, I zero the y-axis again, and now I have the y-axis set in line with the center of the rotary axis module. An even simpler method to set the y zero would be to line up the point of the bit to the point of the tailstock center before you chuck up your stock. You could also zero the z-axis that way, but you could only do it for the first tool and not when you need to change tools during the run. To set the z-axis zero, you use the touch probe to find the zero at the machine bed and then raise up the z-axis 60 millimeters or 2.3622 inches to find the center line of the rotary axis. Once you're there, you re-zero the z-axis. Here you can see that I have set my x-axis zero about a quarter inch or so to the right of the chuck. 
I use VCAR Pro to create my G code and you can see here that my data position is in the lower left. I'm all set up, so let's make some chips. For the roughing pass, I'm using a 1 8 inch down cut bit running at 150 inches per minute and a depth of cut of 1 8 of an inch. I'm going to leave the video at real time speed so you can get an idea of how this rotary axis module performs. I'll just show a few 10 second clips. For the finishing pass, I'm using a 1 8 inch tapered ball nose bit with a 1 16 inch radius tip, cutting at a feed rate of 150 inches per minute and a step over of 5% or 0.0063, just a little over 6 thousandths. Here is the queen chest piece right out of the chuck. I'll use a flush cut hand saw to cut it out and do some light sanding. Here you can see that the tapered ball nose bit is much longer than the 1 8 inch down cut bit and it caused a slight issue when I went to set the Z0. I had to raise the spindle slightly in the mount to get it to touch off and still not hit the limit switch at the top of the Z axis. The solution that I came up with was to use a machinist 123 block that is exactly one inch thick under the Z touch probe and just subtract that one inch from the amount I had to raise the Z axis to find the rotary module center line. The queen chess piece turned out really good, so I decided to run another one, only this time I ran a knight chess piece because it has a lot more detail. For the knight chest piece finishing pass, I'm using the same 1 8 inch tapered ball nose with the 1 16 tip radius, but I changed the step over from 0 0.0063 of an inch to 0 0.0037 of an inch to get a smoother finish and more detail. This did add quite a bit of time to the cycle time though. The finishing pass cycle time was 53 minutes and 3 seconds. Here is the knight chest piece right out of the chuck, and here are both pieces after separating them from the blank. The material I was using was one and a quarter inch diameter oak dowel that I purchased at one of the big box stores. I have to say that I'm really happy with this rotary axis module from NEMA Labs. I think it is the perfect accessory for your NBX 5040 or your MBS 6040 CNC machine. It allows you to make some really cool unique projects. The user manual is very easy to understand and installation is pretty much plug and play. You simply plug the lone cable from the rotary axis module to the back of the controller box where it's marked A axis. If you'd like to check out any of the Nemo Lab CNC machines and accessories like the rotary axis module an MPG pendant that I used in this video. I'll have a link to their website down below in the video description as well as some discount codes so you can save a bundle on your purchase. If you enjoyed this video please leave a thumbs up and if you're not already a subscriber please consider hitting that subscribe button and click the little bell so you'll get a notification every time I upload a new video. Until the next one, thank you very much for watching.